Welcome back everyone. On today's video, we're going to take a quick look into Canadian Bank Earnings Q3 2023. In this video, we're not going to go over every bank's earnings. I've already done so. I'm just going to sum up what's interesting because there's a lot of boring in this. Uh, it was not a particularly interesting quarter, so we don't need to go over every little thing. But um, an interesting point with TD is that they have decided to buy back 5% of their outstanding shares. Now, a lot of you know that they attempted to buy an American uh, bank and that fell through. They did have to pay a fee. It was a lot of money. However, that is now over and done with and all that excess capital is going to be returned to shareholders. And I think that's a really good idea because TD could have rushed to make another acquisition. Uh, uh, some people speculated that they were going to try to buy Laurentian Bank, but uh, they declined to be uh, interested in that. And I think that's a good idea for other reasons. So I like what TD is doing. They're not making a rash decision to just invest that money because they we're about to um they're giving it back to us as the shareholders and i think that's a really good idea because you know the share price is down right now it's in the 82 83 dollar range and you know to me that says that the management thinks that their shares are underrated or undervalued i should say and i do too i mean that's that's under the fair value in my opinion forward earnings uh the multiple all the banks look kind of cheap right now for good reason because of the uh, interest rate fears going forward but um it seems like a good buy right now if anyone out there wants to maybe slowly add or start a position in td um i mean i i'm gonna do it for myself uh don't take my word you look at things and decide if it's a good bank for you but uh, i like it i think it looks good here the next interesting point in the Q3 earnings of the banks is from Scotiabank. Now, Scotiabank is, well, it's just been out of favor for a really long time, uh, them and CIBC, and we can see that in their share price. As we see here in a, over the one-year period, it's down 7.3%, which is pretty bad. I mean, if you take it to consider the dividend yield, which at this price is almost 6.5%, it's not it's not crazy, but this bank has definitely, definitely not done well. It is one that I own. Um, it is more of a yield and undervalued play. But uh, let's just take a quick look here at uh, the one month chart. Now, we went down to $62, and this is, or just 61 and a half here. And this is important for a reason, okay? So, this is what I want to touch on. Everyone thought that this earnings report was going to be very, very bad for Scotiabank. So there was a huge sell-off in anticipation of this. Um, the other banks didn't reflect such a big uh, drop-off. And I also thought there was, this was going to be a pretty bad quarter. And as you can see, there was a slow uptick up. And uh, after the earnings came out, it's been up uh, quite a bit. So what does that tell you? That tells me that the market took a look at the earnings and thought, hey, this isn't quite as bad as we would have thought. Now, don't get me wrong, these are really not good year over year earnings here, quarter over quarter. They didn't do well, to be to be frank with you. Uh, in my opinion, CIBC and uh, the Bank of Nova Scotia did the worst this quarter, Q3. Um, Royal Bank was the only bank with a fairly good quarter. Everyone else was kind of in between. Nothing to write home about, not that exciting. But um, anyways, this quarter for BNS is better than I would have thought, just not very good. I'll let you guys take a look and their uh, earnings report yourself and you can come up to your with your own conclusions. This is just my opinion. And just a quick side note here, guys, a big, big uh, feature of this Q3 earnings for every single bank is the provisions, okay? So these banks are making a ton of money, but they're putting so much away right now as provisions for loan losses going forward and... I like it. It's being prudent. It's putting money away in case something happens. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Next year come this time, if things don't implode, all these banks are going to be sitting on just piles of money. All these provisions they're putting away come back out in a year if not needed. Okay, So they're sitting on <laughs> billions of dollars, some of these banks. It's absurd how much money they've put away recently. Um, so if you think the Canadian economy specifically and, you know, how the banks are doing overall is going to be a lot better than people think, then this is definitely the time to be buying these banks. They're sitting on just treasure chests of gold. If you think the economy is going to collapse, Canadian housing is going to tank, and maybe these banks did not put away enough money. So it's all open for interpretation right now. Nobody knows. I don't know. Um, I think the banks will be fine going forward. I just uh, personally, in my opinion, I don't think they're going to be hitting home runs here. I think they're just, 
uh, going to come back up when the economy comes back up. All right, guys, that's what my thoughts are on the Canadian banks in Q3 2023. Let me know what yours are. Maybe I missed something, something screaming, and I just didn't see it. You guys, let me know. I'm going to uh, keep buying in some of the banks right now. Like I said, I think TD is a good value. I guess I miss buying more BNS. Um, I am going to stay away from CIBC right now. Uh, like I said in a recent video, I don't think they're in the best position. Um because of their Canadian real estate exposure. Now, if you look at it on a dollar basis, CIBC uh, doesn't have the most dollars invested in uh, Canadian mortgage loans, but if you look at it as the percentage of their loan book, that's what's important here, guys. They do have the most, the highest percentage of their loan book tied in with the Canadian mortgages, and I don't really like that. Not that I think we're gonna come in for a huge housing crash, but I do think there'll be some defaults and that will affect the bottom line. Just my opinion, guys. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you in the next one, thanks.